Hello, good evening. After nine long months, another season draws to a close. So what have we learned? Well, the secret of success, no less. Take one wealthy, determined club owner, add a bright, young, ambitious manager, and presto, the world is your oyster. Certainly worked in Division 2, a double for the Dons, League Champions, Cup winners. What next for the upwardly mobile MK? Same can be said of Peterborough. Promotion for Posh. Chairman Darren McAntony is a man on a mission. They start to peak, suddenly you're talking about we have a chance to get into the Premiership. They're looking forward. Tonight we simply have to look back all the way to the very beginning of football here on Anglia. And that then could be the first win for Southampton. Yes, he got there in the end. I am delighted to welcome two very special guests for this final programme of the season. Uh, the man who taught me everything I know about television and the man who taught me everything I know about football. You just have to decide which is which. <laughs> Jerry Harrison and Barry Fry with us. Uh, Barry, first of all, let's just give a nod to your uh, celebrations. Have the celebrations died down? You recovered? Or? No, they've been true. Our fans have been amazing. Absolutely fantastic. They've supported us. Seven, eight, ten, ten and a half thousand fans. 3,000 fans have bought season tickets in three weeks. A record for Posh. Well done, you fans. Did you chuck your socks to the fans in yeah, the celebrations? Yeah, I chucked my socks to the fans. I'm ready for my holidays, as so, you can see. Well, it's gone 11. We can afford to go commando this week. But uh, they, they tell me you kept a very, very low-key uh, kind of uh, profile at the, at the Civic Reception. Before you say anything, let's, let's just take a look for ourselves. You see, hey, Barry, you must be slipping. You didn't, you didn't need a megaphone in the old no. days when you were <laughs> chucking cups at the wall and the, the opposition were ducking. Me, so I had to obey him, otherwise he'd arrested me. Jerry, for so many years, uh, both you and I have had to concentrate on, on the success story in, in the kind of east of the region, the Ipswiches, the Norwich cities, the Colchesters uh, uh, of late, of course. Good to see the West sort of uh, propping up uh, things this year with MK and Posh. Very much so, and uh, led by this guy because they, you've taken some stick over the over the years, oh, but it's uh, it's come good, and and not only good now, but it's good for the future as well. Well, it is even uh, Saturday night forever. Posh, the supporters club, presenting me with a lovely tankard for my dedication to Peterborough Night Football Club. Brilliant. Lump in my throat, absolutely unbelievable. Oh, Thank you. Posh, a little bit later, brilliant. Final program of the season. A uh, good time to reflect on the ups and downs in this part of the world. We will start with the trials and tribulations of life in the championship. Right, so well done posh MK Dons, a good luck South End, the U's like us, not entirely sure what the future holds, but we do know about the past. Now, a long time ago, way before my time, possibly way before all of our time, <laughs> Angley TV became the first television station in the country, I'll have you know, to screen football highlights. Oh, what memories. Here we go. Good luck everyone. Good luck darling. Four, three, two, one. Cue music. On one. This was the game which launched Match of the Week, featuring a goal, a fortuitous one, for the Ted Phillips Ray Crawford combination. Goal to Crawford from that miscued free kick of Phillips. Dodgy camera positions, perhaps, but the contract is for just £1,000, 30 games involving four clubs Ipswich, Colchester, Peterborough, and Norwich here. But the winter of 63 was a tough one, and postponements common. So Bedford Town versus Cambridge United was an emergency main match. And oh, what a wonderful chance! Yes! And as the region expanded, we briefly glimpsed Northampton in the first division against West Ham here. On target and it's a goal! And that then could be the first win for Northampton. Into the 70s now. Wow, colour too. And Hull City were now very much part of the region, along with Grimsby, Lincoln and Kevin Keegan Scunthorpe. This was perhaps the end of the age of innocence, when sometimes the technology was no better than the presenter. So Liverpool moved on to Stamford Bridge, unchanged for the seventh consecutive match, having won their last six away games in a row. Chelsea, a young second. <laughs> but we were enjoying European football now, and Ipswich eliminating Real Madrid. Oh, a tragedy for them, but a great success for Ipswich. And Cambridge were on the up and up. The one horse fall. 
Oh, that's a fine goal. McDougal coming over here. And plenty of flowing football too. Nice, Peters in the middle. What a well hit ball. Into the 80s and the highlight. We had three teams in the first division for a couple of seasons, would you believe, and didn't Luton enjoy it? Scoring goals, conceding goals, and proper slow motion replays too. In the old days, they fitted them in after the game. Was able to feed the ball for Moss, and what a lovely chip that was. He saw Wood four or five yards off the line. And of course, we had a European champion in our midst with a goal-scoring phenomenon at his peak. Walk back tracking. Into the night is now, match of the week had bitten the dust, but programmes like Goals Galore, Kickoff, Anglia Soccer Night kept up the chase. It was now getting more difficult for regional clubs and certainly for regional TV companies, but Premier League football for both Ipswich and Norwich showed that dreams could come true. Sometimes I feel like throwing my hands up in the air. Forget the Premier League. No country in the world has stronger second and third tier clubs than England. Clubs like Southend, Luton, Colchester, Northampton, Peterborough and Cambridge United are all rebuilding, restructuring and Milton Keynes is the success story of the region. That's what makes Milton Keynes so special. So many, many heroes, a few villains and the ups and downs of the region's football. That's been our brief. This may be the end of an era, but that means another one is just starting. Enjoy. Great stuff. He won't thank me for saying it, but football fans in this region owe that man to my right a lot over the years for fantastic coverage here on uh, Anglia Television. But I will ask you one question, Jerry. I used to sit and watch glued to the screen every Sunday, and I still can't work out why it was colour in the first half and black and white in the second. <laughs> well, we couldn't run to decent lights at Peterborough <laughs> like that because the lights weren't good enough and the cameras weren't good enough. But uh, when the cameras improved and the lights improved, then we had colour for 90 minutes, would you believe? I can't believe what I've just heard that this is the last Anglia soccer night. You've shown all our teams in the region, all the supporters are getting excited, and that's the last time they're going to see. Hey, you supporters, or phone your MPs, get them to change the thing, get hold of ITV and sort them out. I'm going to... Uh, Barry, what can I say? You don't need a loud hailer. Um, <laughs> Thank you. The, the, well, the, Gentlemen, <laughs> been a pleasure and a privilege to do business with you. The feelings are mutual. Thank you for everything. Jerry, time to hit the pub. Thank you very much. You all. Thanks for watching. We'll be seeing you again. Who knows? Good night, though. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>